Hi guys. Um, so welcome to the Friday Girl Talk edition of Mali Talk. Um, I just want to say thank you to the ladies and gents <laughs> who sent in questions, you know, um, with everything that's going on. I just thought today is an appropriate day since it's Friday for us to do like a fun video where I will be trying as best as I can to answer <laughs> some of your questions, some of your shady questions. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys are going to have fun. So I'll be looking on my phone because obviously that's where the questions are. So yeah. Um, I hope the music is not bothering us in the background, but I just thought, you know, to create a vibe because it's like Friday, guys, you know what I mean, you know what I mean, like this would be me thinking I'm going to go out later on, you know, so yeah, I just wanted to create that vibe and also because it's not like we're going anywhere anytime soon, so we might as well, you know, make the most of what we have going on, so yeah, uh, so let's dig in, okay, so question number one says, do you entertain crushes, that is the feeling, um, now that you're married? If so, how do you control it? Because Pella boys are delicious! Bamnanzi bafana, boys are delicious! That is such a rich thing that I found and discovered at a club once, but no judgment. Anyway, to answer the question, of course, I mean, having a crush is normal, guys. Like, I think <laughs> even my husband will easily tell you the type of guy he thinks is my type. Like, he'll tell you... He'll see a picture online of someone dressed up in a certain way because he says he knows my type. I don't know if he thinks he's not my type, but that's a story for another day. So he'll be like, my type here, cool up. And I'm like, yay, because maybe the guy looks really hot. So yeah, you do. It's natural. You don't have to feel bad. I think actually you're at an advantage if you're able to be with somebody who kind of understands that that is normal. You know, I kind of understand for him to... Also have crushes if he has, I mean, he's human, guys. It's just not acting on it, you know, that obviously then becomes the drawing of the line. But yes, crushes are normal. <laughs> so question number two, what do you think about girls who make the first move? Does that inform the direction of the relationship? Listen, guys, get 2020, guys. Like, it's really like, just like, you know, a different century. If you like a guy and you think he... You at least you well you know enough about him to think he's your type. Go for it, girl. Go for it. Do I think it um, directs the relationship? Not necessarily, because I want to think that if I'm going to approach you as a guy, um, if I'm a lady and I'm approaching you as a guy, I still do want you to feel like you know you're in control of the relationship, or at least I still want you to be a person who initiates things in the relationship. You know. Um, instead of it just being me and then now I need to be the one who decides when we go on dates I feel like that would be so unfair if a person were to do that to me just because I'm the one who decided to make the first move so ladies make the first move but guys do continue trying to court your woman just because you made the first move does not mean you get to be a lazy ass in the relationship thank you very much right let's move on <laughs> question three have you ever achieved your crush Ebusheni in your youth if so, how did it feel? Hey! Why are you like this, you people? Eh? Why are you like this? Oh, yes. Um, when I was young, I think I must have been about 18, 19. <laughs> Guys, I had such a huge crush on this guy. Like, oh my God, I didn't know his name. I didn't know where he stayed. I literally, the first time I saw him for those known babane, then crossed that up a KFC towards um, the mall the mall yeah so that crossing as a kfc so i was there and he was coming up you know how it's like a bit stiffish so he was coming up with a colleague i froze guys i froze it was the first time i laid eyes on him i froze and i was just like oh, where in the hell did they make such a guy and i was with my then best friend and she was just like dude let's go you look weird you know but i was i was literally like crush stuck struck like you know fast forward three months later i was dating him yay yay so yeah i did achieve my crush and it was such an amazing feeling it was almost surreal like it was almost like this is not happening but it happened it was a nice relationship shame so yeah i did um okay question four how do you deal with rejection career wise social wise and when it comes to a guy you like um i think it would be kind of you know, really being so arrogant. 
to think you are never going to get rejected in life. I mean, I've had business deals that I thought were going to come through, but they didn't. I've had friends reject me. Like one moment I had a group of friends, the following morning I woke up and they had all deleted me on their PBM then. <laughs> you know, and that was like a blow because that was like my crew, my girls, you know, but like, I think I'm a big believer in things really just working out for you if they're meant for you. I often feel like there's enough sunshine for all of us to shine, you know, and I don't think by not being a part of someone else's sunshine that informs anything to say about me. Of course, when it comes to relationships, you want to kind of take a step back and see what contribution you might have had for that situation to end up being a rejection, even career-wise, where you prepared for the interviews and interview, you know, but if you feel like you really just did put your best foot forward and it still didn't work, it was not meant for you. Don't dwell on it. Don't die. Don't go around painting people bad because they rejected you. It's just life. It happens. You can't always have everything that you want. In fact, there are certain no's in my life that when I look back on now, I think, thank God I was saved from that rejection because like <laughs> the guy was like hell then and he's definitely hell now. So why would I want to be stuck in that situation, honey? Mm. So yeah. Okay. Uh, question five. Is it question five. Sex tips for people with body issues. Um. I don't know. Maybe I'm a bit so comfortable with myself in the sense that I know I have shortcomings. I'm short. I have big arms. Like I'm tiny, but my arms are big. I have small breasts. You know, we all have those things that you feel like you're not really comfortable with. I grew up in a swapa, um, like literally the ass you see is from squats, guys. Like I was just flat, you know, maybe also weight gain. But like, I just felt at some point I needed to be comfortable enough in my own skin before I expected somebody else to accept me. So if I was going to be naked in front of someone and they were not really happy with what they saw, then that indicated to me that they need to leave because I'm not about to go and get surgery and get big boobs or cut off my arms like... <clears throat> guys it's not gonna happen i can exercise train whatever but it's just not going to happen overnight so if you have body issues it has nothing to do with the per person you're with it's about you you need to look into that you need to fix that for yourself so that you can be comfortable enough in your own skin if anyone else comes at you you're just able to be like there's the door leave because this ain't satisfactory for you and it's satisfactory for moi so bye felicia mm -hmm. okay uh next question is there something you do to make sure your friendships and relationships thrive yes i'm a very good friend i'm a very good friend i'm a very good friend if i get into a relationship with someone i try my best to be as committed as possible just because maybe i've experienced what it's like to be kind of left at the corner of a relationship or a friendship while you thought it was thriving you know and even in those instances i made peace with the fact that while it was ongoing while i was in the relationship i had actually given it my all and in relationships where i didn't and then the thing ended you know i also wasn't really giving it my all so how was i expecting it to thrive you know but generally i'm an honest person i'm an honest friend i'm a supportive friend i'm a non-judgmental friend like i'm the friend you call at 12 to go and help you bury your body but i'm gonna come back and tell you as how trashy that was for you to have killed the body in the first place but like this is just the one thing i am um so yeah i think if you give your all in a relationship or a friendship and it works up great if it doesn't work out close chapter upagesha and leave because it means there's nothing in the sky that you'd ever be able to do to make that relationship work so it's not about you it's about the other person because remember relationships just like friendships take two people mm -hmm. okay next question uh why is it so hard for married people to be happy <laughs> controversy i don't think it's hard for married people to be happy i think married people they don't really think about what marriage is before they get married this has just been my personal experience where I feel like the idea of being married is like, oh, wow, we're getting married. And then you realize every day you need to live with someone every day throughout their decisions all the time. And then it's like, Ugh, oh my gosh. And then the problems hit like family interference, friend interference, society telling you how a marriage should run. And then you can easily get caught up in all that to a point where you ignore the most important part of the marriage, which is your partner. And then that kind of just blows everything out of the water. Sometimes what I've seen is people don't marry their type. So the minute you do that thing already, 
you are signing your life away to misability because it's never gonna be fun. If the person's not your type, your people are not each other's type, it's just not gonna work. It's just not gonna work. I often tell my friends that there's so many problems that come with being married which you never experience when you're in a relationship. So the best you can do for yourself is that the kind of relationship that leads you into marriage is a proper one. I let drama, you're stuck in a bad marriage, bad, bad relationship, maybe with your baby daddy or a guy just because he was the love of your life when you were 16 and you drag each other all the way into marriage. Honey, I, no. Forever is too long, guys, for you to be stuck in a bad situation. Leave. Stop. Close. Go. Goodbye. Um, next question. What would you say to someone who feels is running out of time concerning marriage? They wish to start a family. Um, starting a traditional family is their dream, but it's not happening. There's no time frame to marriage. You can get married today, divorce tomorrow. You can meet a guy and know him for two years or ten years as I've seen some people and he marries you and you guys don't last even five years in a marriage you can meet a guy three months in he marries you and he's the love of your life and you guys live happily ever after there's no time frame there's no time frame I often get people asking me when are you having kids cause now you're married it's not your business one two there's no time frame that's just how I view life if you want to get married it will happen at the right time there must be some reason in the universe you've not gotten to that point of your life so don't rush it because if you rush it you're going to go back to the question we're on of being in an unhappy marriage um next question do you think a woman can be fully content dating a married man or being a side hey ra 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 shika fire ra ba bike baba what what that that song you guys know it <laughs> um you know what i think it depends on what you're looking for in a relationship if you're looking for something that you don't have to be committed to every day um a happy place as i like to call it then fine you can date a married man i'm not saying it's right but i'm just saying each to his own however if you're looking for a lifetime commitment which then often brings the problem in emma side relationships is that you forget that you're a side and then you want to turn this thing into a permanent thing forgetting that all it was probably for the other person is a happy place so then it leads you to not being content if that's you get out stop cut it that man is never going to leave his wife honey like it's just it's it what it is if he happens to leave her one day It'll be, it needs to be his decision. If it's not his decision and it's you claiming in his head and he's thinking, okay, let me make the right decision and jump, you'll be stuck in a very bad situation. I can assure you of that. Next question. What do you think about polygamy? What do you think about monogamy? I think it's to his own. If being in a polygamous marriage or relationship works for you, if being in a monogamous relationship works for you, do what works for you. And if one thing worked for you before and you went into it and you feel like, no, you know what? It's no longer working for me. I think I want to try the next thing. Honey, try the next thing. What if you're going to live up to 80? You can't allow the way you thought five years ago to direct the way your life is 10 years later. Like, you're allowed to change your mind, guys. So, each to his own. Do what works for you. In a relationship, would you have brought bought your boyfriend a car if you afforded to? Yes, because guys buy us cars every day when they can afford to so why would you not spoil your man i mean when i was advanced some of the guys i dated were working and you know they take me to trips to like sa for shopping you know it was like a big deal you know the least i could have done with my hundred rent because of the student was pay the toll gate like or take them out on a date or pay for supper or buy them a t-shirt or you know just to show them that you know what i see you i appreciate you thank you for being an awesome human being so yes if you can afford to do it do it um is it possible for women to just want to smash and bounce <laughs> yes honey yes if that's what you want to do that works for you warning don't fall in love don't then fall in love and then make the whole situation awkward because when and now you want us to consider your feelings if you grow feelings in a smash and grab leave because it is what it is a smash and grab thank you uh how do you do with girls that try to pick on you I pay them no attention. I have too many problems. I'm trying to chase money and a career and a lifestyle. I don't have time to stop and be trying to pay attention to people who are trying to drag me into their drama. I don't do drama. And you shouldn't either. Lastly, what does being loved and loving feels like in one word? It feels godly. It feels heavenly. It's amazing. If you find someone who can love you as much as you love them, hold on to that person. They are your person. 
thank you for coming to my girl talk and because i have so many questions that i've also received from other people we're going to do another series of the video but for now cheers